He was raised in a Christian home, but he abandoned the faith of his youth to plunge into the domain of the spirit world, seduced by the New Age movement. Today we will meet Will Barron and hear his intriguing story. is written. This is George Vanderman presenting as the answer to your deepest needs, a living Christ, today seduced by the new age. Walk into any secular bookstore and you'll find yourself bombarded by new age publications. Attractively packaged propaganda presenting a subtle mixture of Eastern and Western religion. Christian publishers have mounted a vigorous counterattack. Bible bookstores stock shelf after shelf with titles that warn against being confused by New Age heresies. Unfortunately, most of these Christian books are written from a second-hand perspective. Our guest today had a deep personal involvement in the New Age movement as a priest in training. Nearly cost him his life. Will Barron, welcome to It Is Written. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, your book intrigued me, Deceived by the New Age. What is the New Age? Well, in a nutshell, the New Age is a new religion that is sweeping America and other parts of the world. And in this new religion, the idea is to integrate all the other religions in the world. So the New Age seeks to integrate Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, and even Christianity into one new religion in which almost anything goes. Paganism, astrology, Egyptian tarot, psychic power, uh, UFOs, you name it, and it's all integrated into this package. Why don't we just ask you to tell your story? Maybe we'd get into the heart of it then. By the way, where did you get that delightful accent? Well, I was actually brought up in Northern England and uh, I came to live in the United States in 1979 in uh, Los Angeles. Must have been the Manchester area. It was, yes, near the city of Manchester. <laughs> Good. Well, tell us your story. What brought you to America and how did you get into this? Well, like most people that have been involved in the New Age, I did not plunge headlong into this spirit world at all. In fact, I started out in high school where teachers were talking about reincarnation, they were talking about the ideas of the psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, and these ideas fascinated me. And uh, Freud's colleague Carl Jung talked about reincarnation, and, uh, mysticism, and I started to read books about this subject. I had certain personal problems too that I thought these psychologists could solve. And as I got involved more and more and met people that were involved in the New Age, I became seduced. And it, I was interested initially in holistic health, and then I got involved into the, the deeper aspects. For instance, when I came to Los Angeles in, in 1979, I had a personal problem, a personal crisis in my life, and I needed some sort of counselling. I could have gone to a psychologist, but I decided I was going to see a psychic. I wanted someone that could really probe deep inside my mind and tell me about my life, where I, what I should be doing in order to find happiness and fulfilment. So I made an appointment with one of the psychics, which uh, you see advertised now quite often in magazines and in the newspapers. And I had this interview with her that was incredible. Uh, I talked to her for about an hour and a half and without her knowing anything about my background, she revealed in intricate detail the character of my parents and of the friends that I had. While I was with her, sweat was pouring down my face and mm. yet the room was very comfortably cool. I did not feel excited or in any way nervous. And I thought, wow, for literally beads of water to roll down my face, there must be some real strong power here that this lady possesses. And, and I wanted to know more about it, and I wanted to know about the, the information she was giving me. Where did she get this information from? She was getting it from some source. And so I started to take classes in her metaphysical center that she was the director of. 
And I started to learn how to do Eastern meditation, the Hindu style meditation. Uh, I started to learn how to channel and do channeling, which is to seek to com communicate with the spirit entities and to verbalize what they are trying to sort of speak through a person, through a medium. And I took many classes on astrology, holistic health, Egyptian tarot, uh, many of the things that, for instance, astrology is even in uh, our newspapers every day. And I thought this is quite harmless. And I really believe that this was divine, that this type of activity informa and information was coming from God. Coming from God, you indicate in your book that you met in one of these visions, a beautiful being that's seeming like, like Christ that gave much direction to your life. That's right. About a, about a year after st starting to do meditation, uh, one morning before I went to work, I sat down on the carpet in my bedroom and started to do my regular 10-minute morning meditation. And after about two minutes of closing my eyes and saying prayers and, and certain invocation visualization rituals like visualizing light and things, all of a sudden a power came upon me and it was like a 2000 watt electric light bulb switched on inside mm. my brain and this light then flooded my whole body so it almost became like an incandescent lamp and I had a severe back problem at the time and that pain just disappeared. I felt great peace and then suddenly in front of me stood this man and when I first saw him I thought wow he looks just like Jesus Christ. He had a long white robe, long golden hair, and he radiated incredible light that I was almost blinded looking at him. And he told me that he was Joao Kool, a famous New Age spirit guide or guru. And through a medium, he has written several books and he claims that he's over 350 years old and mm. that he lives in the Himalayan mountains and that he was a Buddhist uh, uh, abbot in a monastery at one time and that he is a fellow brother of Jesus Christ and that he is working for God to help uh, save humanity from its evil course and, and to elevate humanity, to very bring in the new age. Very attractive deception. Exactly, yeah. And he told me he was going to make me his disciple and that I was going to be working for God and that I would not undergo much training and education in, in new age techniques and theology, etc. And that I would be used by God to bring about, help bring about this new age of love and light. Didn't he do much to direct your life personally? Yeah, after this visitation, he, he, I never actually saw him again, but he would communicate to me through meditation. And it was like he took over my voice of conscience. I would hear like a, a, an inner voice that would give me clear directions as to what to do in my life. For instance, he told me once to buy a new car. And then one morning, he told me simply to quit my job as an engineer, to leave the United States and return to England. And he didn't tell me why I should go back there. And when I got there, then I received more directions to join Findhorn, which is probably the leading New Age community Isn't that in the in world. Scotland? That is in Scotland, yes. yeah. They publish a lot of New Age books, and yes. I work for the publication department. Mm -hmm. Then he told me to quit Findhorn and return to America to do uh, more study and training, to join the priesthood, what he called the New Age priesthood. He called Even. it the Melchizedek priesthood. Isn't that... Uh, you're, you're indicating they're using scripture Oh, yes. Language. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, the New Age uh, views Christianity as being divine, but they don't view it as having any exclusive uh, rights to divinity. It's just part of, a, of much information. And they regard Jesus to be a great guru. They, they say, yes, Jesus is the Son of God, but he's not the only Son of God. They say the Buddha is, was also a Son of God, and so was Krishna, and so are several other gurus. Very subtle. Very deceptive. Uh, but they put an interpretation there for you, uh, different than a Christian interpretation. That is correct. For instance, um, I was involved in the New Age for a total of 12 years. And mm. about two years before I finally was rescued from that great deception, uh, about two years I had another spirit guide come into my life. And this spirit guide, he never appeared to me in, in, in like vision or materialization form, but he claimed that he was Jesus Christ. 
and he started to speak to my inner mind, if you will, during meditation or even out of meditation. As I was driving my car, he could speak to me and give me clear directions. And he told me, he said, I am Jesus Christ and you have now got to become a Christian and that it is your destiny to, to be a New Age Christian and to teach other Christians the me methodology of New Age meditation and, and how that Jesus Christ is going to return to this planet, mm -hmm. but not as the person who will come in the clouds with the host of angels, as Matthew talks about. Uh, the whole theology of my spirit guide calling himself Jesus Christ was that he was saying, I am going to return, but I will return to this planet as a man, and that I will have great charisma, I will heal people, and I am going to inaugurate the new age of love and light, the did, millennium as he called it. Did that one point trigger any suggestion from your earlier training that Jesus would not come as a person, I'll not appear in the desert, you know? It did, but the thing is, um, you believe the inner voice rather than the Word of God. <laughs> yes. And we believe that the, the Bible was not inerrant, we believe that it had certain inaccuracies in it, and that it was just incorrectly interpreted by the uh, traditional Christian church and that what was needed was an esoteric interpretation, a New Age interpretation. So uh, my spirit guide uh, told me, said, when I come, you will see me in clouds. But he said, the clouds will be etheric vapours which will surround my feet as I'm speaking. He said, I am not going to come in the clouds of the sky. I am not going to come that way. Uh, that is a mistaken uh, fundamentalist Christian interpretation. I am going to come on this planet as a man and I am going to inaugurate the millennium and this will be the new age of love and light. So I, I started to believe that I really was a Christian, uh, even though I still call myself a new ager. Uh, Christians believe in meditation. The scriptures urge us to meditate. What's the difference? A very big difference. Um, in so-called New Age meditation, which I call introspective meditation, the whole goal is to sit in silence and directly listen to the voice of God or the voice of the Holy Spirit or the voice of the Father speaking to you and giving you direct instructions. But the meditation in the Bible, whenever you look at the verses, it always references contemplation upon the Scriptures. In other words, you're not listening to a voice in your mind, in an inner voice. When you meditate in the biblical sense, you are simply thinking about what God has already told us in His Word. Now, I believe the Holy Spirit can inspire us, but I believe if you sit in silence with your eyes closed, you are basically taking part in a Hindu paganistic satanic practice and this was never taught in the Bible. The Apostles never taught that we should sit in not. silence of, of self-hypnosis and try to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Apostles never taught that and I, I, I am shocked to see in the Christian church there are now certain people that are telling us we should sit in silence and meditate and listen to the voice of God. And it is, it is a terrible apostasy. And you'll hear a voice, okay, but I believe it's going to be the voice of demons. And they're going to use biblical sounding words when they speak to you initially. But you're going to be led astray into apostasy as, as, well, as much as I was. Yours is a voice of experience, of course, and we're grateful for today. Twelve years. Let's turn this thing around. How did you escape? Well, it was a, a miraculous intervention, I believe, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, because I was claiming to be a born-again New Age Christian, I was doing some research. I had started a ministry to promote this New Age Christian gospel, and I was reading Gordon Melton's book, Encyclopedia of American Religions. And I came across a section about a Christian lady way back in about 1845 who claimed to have had visions from God. And as I was reading, I thought, wow, Christian lady having visions, it sounds like a New Ager about 150 <laughs> years before her time. <laughs> i got to get a book about this lady. So I was inspired to, to get a book, and I read a book. Uh, it was by a guy called Rene Norberg and called Ellen White, Prophet of Destiny. And Ellen White was a figure of great controversy within Christian circles for many, many decades. And um, I, I started to read this book about her and I started to read one of the visions that she claims to have had in which she 
is shown what Satan looks like in reality, that he is not this person we all imagine, a, a demon with a three-pronged spike, with a horns. black cloak <laughs> and horns out of his head. <clears throat> and I read that description where she says he is an angel, an angel fallen, but he looks like an angel with, with say, golden hair and, and, and uh, in a sense looks a beautiful angel. And as I was reading that description, I don't know what happened. Suddenly inside of me it was like I was split open and I knew that the spirit entity that appeared to me in 1981, radiating that light, I knew that he was one of Satan's angels masquerading mm. as an angel of light. And I just knew, I was devastated. I knew that the new age was Satan's counterfeit religion designed to thwart Christianity and designed to lead Christianity into apostate practices and teachings. I just knew it and I, I was devastated, totally shocked. I mean, I'd spent thousands of dollars on the New Age to try and start ministries and support centers and I realized it was all for nothing. It was all for Satan. I understand that there's another very important feature in your change you write about. Didn't you receive clear instruction to infiltrate Christian churches by asking them to read their Bible? And did that trigger some memories for you? It did, yes, yeah. Um, this spirit demon that claimed he was Jesus Christ, yeah, he did. He told me, he said, I want you to join Christian churches and tell them about this process of meditation, that th th they need to come into closer relationship with me through meditation. And I would go into Christian churches and I would start reading my Bible and I think, wait a minute, what this Bible says just doesn't match with what this demon, if you will, my spirit guide, or who's calling himself Jesus, what he is claiming is truth. There was a mismatch, but yet in error, I believed the inner voice. I believed what the spirit guide was telling me and decided to twist scripture to fit what the demon was saying. But I knew there was a problem. I knew that the path I was following was not in harmony with the Bible. The way it is written very clearly, I knew that. But I, but I decided to ignore that, and it was only through that intervention when I see. realized Satan was masquerading as an angel of light that I then totally left the New Age and, and became a true Christian. What you're saying is so very, very important, this question of direction and our mistake of the voice, our mistaken concept of these voices yeah. and meditation. This has been very, very helpful. Do you have any flashbacks? Sydney, what, uh, how do you feel now? Are there times when this former addiction comes back to you? Absolutely, yes. Um, I read some research recently that 56% of a certain denomination, its clergy, 56% of its clergy don't believe that Satan exists as a being that directs evil. And I am just aghast at that kind of statistic yeah. because to yeah. me, Satan and his angels are very real. They're still trying to influence me with their power and with their telepathic power, their psychic power. They can plant ideas and thoughts into our minds. They have that power. Temptation is real. I, I believe some temptations comes from within us, the carnal nature, the desires, yeah. etc. But a lot of it is satanic angels that we cannot see, but are here amidst us, and they try to lead us astray. And they don't announce, oh, I'm a demon and I'm coming to tempt you. They're not going to tempt a Christian into the New Age. They will do it very subtly. They go around a long path to lead you into deception. But Christ said, narrow is the road that leads to eternal life, and we cannot go by this wide road. We've got to stay very narrow with exactly what the Bible says. If we, I believe if we just stay by the Bible, we will not be deceived. They will try it. They will try to deceive us in any way they can. But we have that assurance in the Bible and this, our faith in Christ. This means a decisive stand on what we know to be truth. Absolutely. Otherwise Absolutely. we're no compromise wide whatsoever. open to serious deception that the average Christian has no idea is that's, operating. That's right. And yes. how the enemy is preparing the way. Kiss coming on the ground rather than in the skies. This type of meditation. That's right. The powerful opening of the mind. Mm. This has opened up a whole new world mm. for our viewers. I'm so grateful. Tell me, um, uh, 
What are your plans for the future? Now, you're not a minister. Well, I would certainly like to help people who have families that are involved in New Age or help people themselves if they are in the New Age because I know from experience that even if you come out of the New Age, the demons don't let go. They try to hold on, they try to deceive you and it is my goal to help people to come out of this deception and to stand firm on prayer and faith. And people, many families I know who are Christians have said that sons or daughters or relatives that are involved in the New Age, and they tell me, what can we do? And I'm hoping that my book can be a tool to rescue these people and to prevent them from getting involved in yoga, meditation, astrology, and all these things that are accepted as quite normal today. Tell me, uh, uh, no further contact with Finn or in Scotland. No further contact, of course, with the local Los Angeles centers of metaphysics and so on. What about these Renaissance fairs, these psychic camps and so on? Is this where our young people get caught? Absolutely, yes, yeah. And many times in our newspapers you've got pro-New Age articles in there. Often it starts very innocent with holistic health, yes. uh, healing methods. But they, they all lead to that wide road to destruction. We have to be very careful. I'm not saying all New Age health concepts are wrong. I'm not saying that. But it's a matter of who is the person uh, that's pushing these doctrines or these practices or methods. If he's a New Age, you've got to be very now you careful, keep well aware. You mentioned in your book that parents need to watch for signs among their children as to the direction they're going. Mm. Could you just give us a brief word on that? Well, I think they've got to be careful what kind of books and magazines the children are bringing home. Um, if they, for instance, notice that the children have maybe got candles in the room, they may think this, this child is starting to get involved in meditation, or if the children are starting to burn incense, or if they've got friends who are New Ages or in inviting them to things like uh, Scientology or Unity, which are not mainstream New Age, but their movement's very close to the New Age. I think they've got to be very careful, very careful indeed. Many, many people are being deceived today. These final statements, I think, are very, very helpful. And I want to thank you, Will. This means so much to it is written and our viewers. I want to thank you for them. God bless you. Thank you for inviting me here. Thank you, Will, for sharing with us today. And thank God for your testimony. And for all of you viewing this telecast today, we have a gift. This book, Impersonation Game. Its vital message unmasks the impersonations of the spirits inherent in the New Age movement. I'll explain in just a moment how you can call or write for your free copy of The Impersonation Game. And we'll mail this gift book to you. We'll send with it and a brochure describing how you can purchase Will's book direct from the publishers. Deceived by the New Age. Deceived by the New Age, the story of a New Age priest. And now before we close our telecast, let me share some cautions and observations of my own about the New Age. Hollywood celebrities herald its gospel as inner renewal. And New Age books promise refreshing and relevant information to transform your life. Actually, they're merely recycling the ancient philosophies of Hinduism, modified for Western society. You see, New Age teachings deny the life-giving truth about the Lord Jesus Christ that we find in the Bible. Listen to what Jesus says about himself. John, the 14th chapter and the 6th verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's no doubt about it. Jesus is not just one of many ways to find God. He's the only way. Nobody can come to God outside of the blood Christ shed for our salvation. He's the Savior and the Creator of the world and our coming King. One day soon, He'll burst through the clouds and introduce the real New Age with God's eternal home for the saved. Tragically, most of the world will be lost because they believe the propaganda, unprepared to meet the Lord of glory. Remember, remember that Jesus warned, Matthew 7, 14, narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are 
few who find it. Oh, how about you, my friend? Are you ready for that day? Have you met the real Jesus? He loves you just as much as he loves Will Barron or anyone else. What he did for Will, he longs to do in your life. I urge you to open your heart to Him as your Lord and Savior just now as we pray. Father in heaven, we praise you for Jesus, our Creator and our Savior. Just now we open our hearts to Him. Help us to follow Him faithfully until that glad day when He comes to take us home. We pray this in His saving name. Amen. Are you grateful today, just as I am, for a God who always tells the truth, even when the enemy has a deadly strategy, a global strategy, to deceive the human race, we can still find the truth in God's Word. That's why I hope you'll call or write today. Let me send you this book, The Impersonation Game, on so many of these key issues, the New Age deception, death, life after death, and so many others, this book shares Bible scripture after Bible scripture that reveals the plain answers. God knows we need to see us safely through these treacherous days. Now, there's no charge. We want you to have a copy for your very own, and just as soon as we hear from you, we'll put one in the mail. Now, also you'll find information about this vital book and how you may achieve it too. You may own it. Look, Deceived by the New Age, the story of a New Age priest. Now, here is the information you need. As a convenience, you may request today's free gift offer, Impersonation Game, by calling our toll-free number, 1-800-253-3000. Call right now. That's 1-800-253-3000. Remember, the offer is sent by mail, free and postpaid. You may have to dial the number more than once, but please keep trying. The operator needs only your name, address, and phone number, and the name of the offer, Impersonation Game. Call toll-free now, 1-800-253-3000. Lines are open 24 hours daily. If you prefer, you may request the offer by writing to George Vandeman, Thousand Oaks, California, 91360. And now all too quickly we're forced to say goodbye, everyone. But remember, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.